Hi everyone, it's Dr. Tom O'Brien and I'm here today with my really close friend Jeffrey Smith. Jeffrey is the Executive Director of the Institute for Responsible Technology and this is the guy in the world who is telling us about the dangers of GMO foods, glyphosate, Roundup, and how it's impacting on us. Jeffrey travels the world much more than I do. He is my mentor on how to carry the word out to the general public on the problems with something that we're exposed to regularly. In my world, it's gluten and gluten sensitivity and the development of autoimmune diseases. In Jeffrey's world, it's GMO foods. Jeffrey, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you very much. Now, I've had the privilege in the last few days of spending time with you at a conference that was here in San Diego, the Environmental Health Symposium. And I was startled by the information. And I thought I knew something about GMOs. I was startled by what I, by what I learned there. I am convinced now, let me talk to you directly, no longer is it only that we have to be concerned about exposures to gluten for every human, we also have to be concerned about GMO as a frontline, top of the field con concern for us and our families. And that's because of the work that you've done over the years and how the people behind you have carried this message out. It turns out that we've done a, a, some collaborative efforts on the effects of GMOs on predisposing the body to gluten reactions, how the GMO itself, the BT toxin perhaps, and certainly the Roundup herbicide that's poured onto most GMOs, because most GMOs are herbicide tolerant, Roundup ready, genetically engineered with foreign genes to allow the crops to be sprayed with Roundup. Roundup can create gut dysbiosis in terms of the gut bacteria and the leaky gut and all these other things that we've talked about over and over again. Yes. And there is so much information that you're working on a movie right now about this. Right, Secret Ingredients. Now, the last movie we did, which was called Genetic Roulette, had a huge impact. Rocked the world. Yeah, it was seen by million. The first week, it was seen by 1.2 million people. It's been played over 300 times on PBS. Um, it's been translated into several languages. And it's converted more people to non-GMO diets than any book, movie, tool, etc. Now, so many people converted to non-GMO diets because of the movie and also before, we have been getting besieged with testimonies from doctors, from people who switch to non-GMO and or organic diets and eliminate chronic diseases that have been there for years. So we were interviewing uh, Kathleen and realized that this was an amazing story we wanted to share. And so that became the beginning of this film, Secret Ingredients. Her family had 21 chronic conditions between the five of them. Whoa. She was experimenting with things. She had taken gluten out. She had done other things. But she was still managing disease. Certain things were intractable. Went to an all-organic diet. Everything changed. No long, her son is no longer diagnosed with autism. And she no longer has to take permanent disability, Social Security benefits. So many things changed. Reverse autism. Yes. It, in this particular case, the diet made the difference according to the family. And so the organic broccoli instead of conventional broccoli. Yes. Just organic foods, the same foods they were eating before, or uh, if they could find them organic, but not having to eat brown rice and sprouts, not having no, to exactly. eat some macrobiotic diet or exactly. something. Exactly. They, they, they still eat recognizable food that Americans eat, but without the secret ingredients of GMOs and Roundup and pesticides. Now. This may sound like a one-off, like this family was just a bizarre uh, aberration. But we also have another family with a, with a son that's no longer autistic, and another family with a son that's now autistic but moved into the mainstream, and cancer survivors, and skin conditions, and all sorts of behaviors and physical conditions that improve when people switch to an organic diet. Now, we also have physicians in there saying that this is typical in their patient population because they prescribe non-GMO diets to everyone and organic diets to everyone. And they say a certain percentage of people, not everyone, not every autistic child, but a certain percentage of them will react exclusively with the diet or a, a clean diet in conjunction with other treatments. Many of my friends now are prescribing um, uh, organic diets, non-GMO diets to their patients. Many. They say it's a prerequisite. Thousands of doctors are prescribing and we have so many people in this movie who have dramatic stories. And you can watch the trailer at secretingredientsmovie.com and you can find the trailer and watch. In fact, the trailer itself has convinced some people 
to switch to organic. Secretingredientsmovie.com. Right. In addition to the, to the people and the physicians, we also have scientists who explain why GMOs and Roundup can explain these particular disorders that people are recovering from when they go on to an organic diet. Now, I was startled, startled by some of the information I've learned from you that is included in this movie. And I consider myself to be uh, pretty up on the literature, but I was startled by some of the things I've seen. You know, I actually didn't believe people years ago when they said they could tell the difference when they're eating GMOs or not. Because I, I'd been speaking about it all over, even at yes. medical conferences, but I didn't think it was going to be that that um, obvious. Yes. And then the doctor started prescribing non-GMO diets, and they told me it's that obvious. And I remember talking to a doctor at, a, at an academy uh, meeting, and she said that they're all getting better. And I, and I said, can I come to your clinic and interview your patients? And I did, and I was shocked. And I was shocked at how clear the changes were. Then I started interviewing people from the stage at more than 125 lectures, asking them, what gets better when you switch to a non-GMO diet, an organic diet? And they started telling me. And the number one improvement was always gastrointestinal. The number two was always uh, increased energy and reduced brain fog. And there was weight problems and allergies and skin conditions and pain and anxiety and depression, etc. cetera. Then I, it, then I surveyed 3,600 people, and it was the same order, the same order of diseases and disorders that were improving. And then you look at the lab studies, and these are the same problems that the animals have. You look at the animals in the farmhouse that's been switched to non-GMO, they're getting better from the same problems. Same with the pets. And these are the problems that are on the rise in the U.S. population, parallel with the introduction of GMOs and glyphosate. So we have repeating patterns which implicate GMOs, Roundup, and pesticides in general for a vast amount of sickness and disorders in the United States. So we, we can hear um, testimony about nutrients. Take some vitamins, take a multiple vitamin, you're going to get better, and here's all the conditions you might get better from. We can hear, take gluten out of your diet, and you're going to get better from this, this, and this. What is it that makes a difference? Why is it this whole field of GMO is as critical as I know it is? It, it, we're going to actually explain this in the film, so I don't want to, I don't want to be a plot spoiler, <laughs> but just take Roundup, for example. It's uh, a probable human carcinogen. It's an active ingredient. It's an endocrine disruptor. It's, uh, it's a chelator, so it blocks mineral absorption. It blocks the shikimate pathway, which is the precursor for serotonin, melatonin, and, and dopamine. Um, it, it's a mitochondrial toxin. It helps prevent the detoxification of the cells in the liver. Um, and, and that's just to start. And for all of you who say, well, I don't drink Roundup, I don't take Roundup, look in your garage. Look and see if you have any weed killer in your garage. That's Roundup. But if you eat anything with corn or soy in the United States, it doesn't say non-GMO or organic. In the mixed corn, not necessarily the corn on the cob, because some isn't, some isn't. But anytime you have corn oil or, or corn chips, it is sprayed with Roundup. And then, of course, the process of genetic engineering is also disruptive and can cause problems. And that was complained about by the FDA scientists who were overruled by the political appointee in charge, Monsanto's former attorney, later Monsanto's vice president, now the U.S. food safety czar. And when Monsanto was running the policy, it said, no testing necessary. So the stuff goes on the market without any required testing, even though the testing that is done independently wow. shows early death, organ damage, multiple massive tumors, and all these other problems. And the bottom line, the bottom line here for me is that our children born today have a shorter projected lifespan than their parents. For the first time in the history of the human species, our offspring will die early. Uh, they'll get sick earlier, they'll get diagnosed with disease earlier, and they'll die earlier than the parents. We're doing something incredibly wrong here, and we need to wake up. And I now have learned that glyphosate, one of the ingredients in Roundup, that residue is in so much of our food chain now, we're being exposed to it all the time, it's as potent or more potent than gluten toxicity. Now, the good thing about the GMO fight is that we have tremendous leverage in the supermarket and in the, in the industry. When consumers were concerned about eating GMOs because of heavy coverage in the news in Europe in 1999, the tipping point occurred on April 27th. Unilever said no more GMOs in their European brands. The next day, Nestle's, the next week, everyone else. It became a marketing liability. 
Similarly, bovine growth hormone, Monsanto's genetically engineered cow drug, was kicked out of most American dairies a few years ago because of consumer education and a tipping point. The GMOs were kicked out of the natural products industry in 2013, and now we see mainstream brands like Cheerios and Grape Nuts and Hershey's and Campbell's putting non-GMO on their products, and we expect to see a tipping point. And the thing is, this film is designed with behavior change messaging. Genetic Roulette really moved the needle, but this is the film I've been wanting to create. This is going to inf influence far more people, far more millions, and could be the missing link to create the tipping point that's already on the horizon. This is the film that may move the needle enough so that now there's enough momentum and the government start regulating this and get it out of there the way they've done in Europe, that we have to do it here in the U.S., and once we do it, the whole world will follow us. So this is the film that might do that, which is why we're talking to you today. How is it that we can help, Jeffrey? Well, we have finished shooting yesterday. <laughs> we're done with all of our interviews. We've actually been well underway in the editing. We've been working on it for more than a year, but we are running out of money now and we need money for animation, color correction, final editing, and we, we can use that as like today. So uh, people could help by making a donation, and since we're affiliated with the San Francisco Film Society, it's available as a tax-deductible donation if people would need it. So we're asking you to help. Help us get this film done, get it edited, get the animation, everything, so that when people watch it, their impact, and they say, oh my gosh, look at this, and they're motivated. This is a high-end film that Jeffrey is producing. They need some help. So if you can give $10, if you can give $10,000, whatever it is you can give, just think about, do you want a world for your children, your grandchildren, for yourselves, that doesn't have these poisons that are causing so much damage? And what can you do? What can you, well, we can write letters to our congressmen or send emails to our congressmen. You also can send some dollars to help finish this film to get it out. Jeffrey already has a track record with genetic roulette seen by millions of people around the world that changed the direction of GMOs getting into many, many countries. We've just got a really powerful lobby in this country. We're going after this country now. We need to change and get this stuff out of the food chain. So please help any way you can. I want to suggest one other thing to the viewers. Watch the trailer. Go to secretingredientsmovie.com, watch the trailer. And then, if you switch to organic, take notes. Do a health journal, do an energy level journal, do a mood journal. Find out if switching to organic is making a difference. And have the journal information there so that you can validate it for yourself. And a lot of people, as you'll see in the film, they switch to an organic diet, and then they may backslide and notice a change where certain things come back, and then they realize, oh, it was the food that was causing this problem, and then they realize, oh, it was when I switched to organic that it went away. Right. So, it's like you think, I'm healthy, I'm eating at a salad bar, you know, I'm, I'm eating healthy foods, and yes, vegetables are critically important. But now, unfortunately, we have this whole category of toxic vegetables. I mean, they're vegetables, and they're very important for us, but now they're toxic because they've got these glyphosates in them. Yeah, and Roundup is sprayed on wheat, barley, rye, uh, lentils, sweet potatoes, potatoes, etc. as a drying agent, sugarcane as a drying agent at the end of their, of their growing season, right before harvest, and it ends up in the food. So the EPA has allowed over 160 types of crops to have wow. residues of glyphosate and glyphosate-based herbicides that are a million times higher than the amount associated with multiplying human breast cancer cells. But I'm getting ahead of myself... It's in the film. That's in the, I, want I want more. I want more rice. I want a lot more. So we think making lentil soup is healthy for us. It's healthy for us. Well, it is. However, if it's, if it's GMO containing... It wouldn't be GMO lentils. It would be lentils that were sprayed with Roundup as a part of the ripening right, thank process. You. Thank yes. you. Yes. So we have, we, we're using lentils that are not organic. It's lentils that have residue of the sprays that were sprayed the weeks before they harvest. So why do, why do they spray wheat with uh, Roundup before they harvest? Like it's three to five days before harvest in some cases. What it does is it forces the wheat, because it's going to die, it forces it to send all of its energy into the seed so that it cause, causes uniform ripening as it dries down the wheat. How convenient. And it kills all the weeds for next year. So it does both. Yeah. How convenient for them. How terrible for us. Right? So we have an opportunity 
taking it out of our own food supply, and collectively taking it out of the food supply. So this is something you can do that's going to help your family, your grandchildren, the next generation to get this out of there. So let's help this guy. He's devoted his life to this. This is what Jeffrey does day in and day out every day. I've known Jeffrey for years. He's never off. He's always on talking about this topic, going somewhere in the world. He needs some help here now. Please help with whatever you can do. Send him a check. Uh, uh, look on the, on the uh, trailer as to how you can contribute to this one. Jeffrey, thank you so much. Thank you, Tom. And safe eating.